We've got our data model created. It's got two data sets in there. It's got our customer info and our order info data. Now comes the time to create the relationship. Now, depending on what version of Excel and the corresponding Power Pivot tool that you have, there's gonna be a couple different ways for you to create the relationships. What I'm gonna use here, and remember I'm on the latest release, 2019 through the uh, Microsoft 365 subscription model. What I can do here, is on my home tab, I can go over to diagram view, it's just right here. Currently we're looking at the, what they call data view. You can see it just right next door, um, but it looks a lot like an Excel worksheet, right? We got the row headers there. We got our column headers, don't have the ABC and whatnot, but we got our list column headers there. The diagram view, if I give that a click, this is gonna give you a view of essentially the tables. That's really it, just the structure of the tables, the headers themselves. Okay. Now I got my customer info table on the left. I got my order info table on the right. I'm going to grab, I'm gonna click on customer ID and I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag it on over. See that line that I'm creating? I'm gonna drag it over to customer ID and the order info table and then I'll let go. You give it a moment and we now have a relationship between these two tables. Now, if you're not familiar with table relationships, just a, a little bit of information here. The customer info table is what I'm gonna to refer to as the parent table. The order info table is what I'll refer to as the child table. Now, why parent and child? In the customer info table, we have the customer ID. The customer ID and the customer info table, for each customer, you're gonna have the customer ID and it's gonna be unique for each customer. Remember ALF key, A-L-F-K-I? That value will only show up once in that table. Once for one record, that's it. In the order info table, remember this is the child table or the children, the customer ID also shows up there but each customer ID can repeat multiple times. You know, in this scenario, customers and orders, we want it to show up multiple times. The more the customer places an order, right? The better for us, right? They place more and more orders, the customer ID shows up multiple times in the order table. Great, right? That's, that's, that's customers and orders, that's a good thing. But we only want it to show up once inside of the customer info table. Now, if you look closer at the relationship line that was created there after we dragged customer ID to customer ID, we got a little one because the customer ID shows up once in that table. Each customer ID once, it's unique. And we got a little asterisk symbol over here on the order info table that denotes a many side of the relationship. The customer ID can show up there many times. We have what's called a one to many relationship. It's a little bit of background information, just if you wish to have that information, but we've created the relationship. We're just about there. We've got Power Pivot. We've created the data model based on our two data sets, and we've created the relationship there. Now, if you don't have a copy of Power Pivot that has the diagram view, if I go back to data view, another way to create the relationships, if I go to my customer info tab, I can right click on the header there and you'll have an option for create relationship. If I give that a click, customer info is our first table. I'll go to the drop down here. I'll grab order info and we just want to make sure that customer ID and customer ID is selected and you can hit OK and you'd be good to go. So either approach will give you the same end results. I'm going to cancel out because I already created mine. Diagram view, I've got my relationship. So get to that point right there. We've got the relationship. I get back to data, data view. I've still got two separate tabs there, right? Customer info and order info, but they are now related in this data model. So nail that part down and get the relationship created. And then we'll move into our next section and we'll start creating a pivot table based off this data set.